Hello, dear viewers. Um, it's Villa Kaunisto. I'm the um, lead designer and technical artist and programmer and many other things of Stardust Galaxy Warriors and uh, Stardust Galaxy Warriors Stellar Climax. And I'm here today to do a post-mortem of said game from a, I guess, primary design point of view. Well, it's a side-scrolling space shoot 'em up game with um, silly story and like uh, light RPG mechanics, pretty much. It's a, uh, it's pretty much what it is. It's a, it's a coach co-op shooter focused on being fun, and it's a weird shoot 'em up because it's not a shoot 'em up that is all about like, oh, this is the hardest game ever. Uh, it can be a bit difficult at times, but it's a shoot 'em up which is like, oh, it's really fun to blow things up. That's that's pretty much what it's arcadey, arcadey, arcadey game. It's also our first published game. I guess that's one thing it is. It's also, in a way, my little baby. That's it, it's many things, but primarily those, I guess. Well, we, it's it's quite funny. We started. Um, it was initially a student project for a game development competition, and we came in second uh, in the competition with that. And then at the same time, they started a studio that was then called Vasara Entertainment for to work in a completely different game. Um, and at some point, it turned out that that game was quite ambitious and maybe overly so, or indeed overly so. And then we, re we realized that hey, we already have this one game that was sort of verified the viability of. Like it came in second in this competition, it, it kind of works. Why don't we just finish this one? Um, and, and that's what we did, pretty much. And then there's, of course, a lot of more history there, because Vasar Entertainment now only exists under Dreamloop Games, which is because then later on down the line we merged with... Um, well, we joined our forces with Dreamloop. Uh, and then, well, the easiest way to do that was to establish it so, for bureaucratic reasons, was to make it so that we have... Um, one of the company kind of buys all the shares of the other one with its own shares. So we can uh, all the, you know, Vasara people kind of just became Dreamloop shareholders and now Dreamloop is the only company that owns, owns Vasara and all that. It's all very dry and bureaucratic, but that's pretty much the, like, we started students and then the original Dreamloop guys, I think they started working on another gaming company. We kind of got together uh, for some weird reason, we tolerated each other and that sort of possumed them to forming a studio. I think that's the short of it. It was from the get-go, like the core thesis was... And that's a funny thing to say because it was supposed to be a thesis project um, for a lot of us. And for me as the designer, the topic of my thesis would have been um, fun, fun, the concept of fun as a design guideline in, in making a video game. So that was sort of the, the core of it. And it's such um, like a broad thing, like it wouldn't seem like a helpful guideline. Like of course video games are supposed to be fun, but the more you think about it, the more you realize that there's like different types of fun and there's also mechanics that are not directly fun. So like, cause you can have a mechanic where like something is super frustrating, but you will feel really good once you beat that really difficult boss or whatever. But like the act of fighting in itself is not necessarily as fun. Or, you know, you can have a MMO where you want to, you know, you want to grind, you need to grind for something. And once you get that, it's really fun. But the act of doing it is only fun because you anticipate the reward. SCW was like, we want to have as much direct fun as possible um, in, in, a, in a shooter game. I think really early on I wrote um, the core philosophy part of the game design doc and it's really funny because it feels that we changed so many things and we had no idea what we were doing and stuff like that but back then when I go back to read those original bullet points of, of what it was supposed to be about most of them really still fit like there was I think the first one was like no gimmicks uh, that was to say that like you shouldn't have a mechanic to carry your game like it shouldn't be like oh you know you can you can stop time and that's why it's fun or or you know you can do whatever like just make it as simple as possible like as basic as possible and then make that fun and then you can add things on top of that but like don't have a core level gimmick that you use as a crutch like you know like like this is what makes the game fun the, the game itself is the gameplay itself is what makes the game fun of course you can have a mechanic like that um 
and, and make it fun. But for this specific game, we didn't want to do that. We wanted to be like, how do we make a side-scrolling shooter and just make it really fun? And that's that's what we did. Um, and then art-wise, like, I guess the other thing was that we wanted to have giant mechs. And I guess ultimately just that giant mechs are fun. <laughs> like, that's that's really really what it is. And there's some other, other like, we, it, it just sort of happened. And um, then art-wise, art we had a lot of references uh, to Saturday morning cartoons, like 80s, 90s Saturday morning cartoons, Transformers, uh, of course Gundam, stuff like that. Um, you know, a, a bunch of stuff. Um, comic books, like, you know, especially like uh, older cosmic, like space Marvel stuff, stuff like that. Um, it was all like sort of... It, it's really weird, like, it, it, these are just things that it somehow felt right to... Like, we were bouncing around ideas, and these were the ones we all liked, and it so, sort of just evolved this this identity of its own. Like, you couldn't really, like... On hindsight, it simultaneously feel obvious and completely non-obvious that you would do it this way. So it's... But, but ultimately, um, I think that would be it. Like, the philosophy was to just make something that's like fun and badass and and also i guess the whole thing that it's um like e for everyone rated game like that was another thing we want to try or i especially as a as a writer i want to challenge myself like can i make a game that anybody everybody can enjoy even from a writing point of view or even from a rating point of view um that is still not like doesn't become overly obnoxious and, and sort of like uh, also this aversion to overt edginess, which is like, because if you're looking at all this material, like uh, Transformers, Marvel Comics, DC, whatever, all of these have gone through these edgy phases since the, um, well, or, or even when, at the time period that we used for reference. And I was, I kind of want to get away from that. Like one thing I remember thinking is I want to write this like, as if it's Borderlands, Borderlands 2, but with less like edge. And I, I would like to say that with less memes, but that doesn't really mean anything at this point, because at this point, if a funny thing annoys somebody, you can just say that, that stupid meme, I hate this meme game. So <laughs> I wouldn't maybe say that. But it was pretty much just looking at things we liked and thinking, oh, you know, these could all fit together and it could be something really fun, and then just going from there. That's, it's not really the most deeper philosophical answer, but... There is certain magic to it, where like all these pieces somehow just click and oh, hey, now now this works. And something new is born from pieces that in by themselves are not really somehow magically original. Like it, it falls back to the whole like no gimmicks thing. Like you shouldn't have any gimmicks creatively either. Like, oh, you know, we have this one specific thing that makes our, makes our setting like this, you know, what if, you know? So SCW was kind of like, uh, let's just make a setting without no single defining gimmick apart from everything needs to be fun that we fall back on all the time and it just allowed us to focus on you know kind of going gameplay first but I'm just really really rambling here so and my bottom line is that we just wanted to make a cool and fun game uh, insofar as we understand those things like of course it's always gonna be subjective so. Yeah, uh, there were some minor things um, when going through them. Like, for example, originally we didn't have health bars at all. We wanted to have like these little drones that follow you around and they just were just like, they're green when you can take three hits and, and, and yellow when you can take two and red, uh, if you're red, you will die in one hit and there was no damage or anything. Like, we want to make it as simple as possible. But that made like, it became too... Uh, shallow so to speak and also that it was hard to read like it got to but people were, what what is that color why did i die now so we transitioned to a more you know statty system of having health and values and stuff like that and and then from there we also had the whole like no grind like in in the beginning that was a really big thing was like no grind nothing must be like you need to be able to you know go to your friend's place and they buy the game or whatever and you start playing and need to have everything available we don't want to have like oh you had to play a certain amount to get certain mech or whatever and that is there but we do did still end up adding like new game plus and we ended up adding the custom upgrades you can buy and uh, uh light role playing mechanics and stuff like that like those did become an element and i think that was maybe a thing we realized was that um maybe the game could have benefited 
from doing a little bit more of that, like really building it from the ground up to have uh, support the, you know, the replayability through New Game Plus, stuff like that. Another philosophy or another re reflection of this same philosophy was that we had all the little things available from menu like we had the campaign and then we had separately the gauntlet which is like infinite mode and then we had these challenges that we made that are like specific fun because we had this like sort of editor for different things for different perimeters so we made like these predefined challenges with certain circumstances stuff like that so that was maybe one like certain mistake that we made i want to do differently like to put put like so many things in menus because on hindsight, like people, they just want to play, like, you know, they, from the menu, they don't want to mess around in menu, they want to press, you know, play game, you know, campaign mode, and then maybe in there you want to do some stuff. So that was, that was maybe one thing. Uh, yeah, it was, like, there was some assumptions that we could get away with having less content, so to speak, and then we mitigated those. That would be Matthias, our music guy and sound guy. Um, Making that soundtrack was, like, it was, even for me, it was really fun. Like, my role mostly was just throwing references at Matthias and, like, thinking. And it, it had the same thing as all of the design in the game, where it kind of, we just fell back on certain things. Like, for example, um, one quite distinct, well, I mean, all the tracks are distinct. But, for example, if you take the Abyssal Wreck, the Underwater Rebel, level with has the organs, and it's, like, a little bit, like, a... It maybe a little bit stands out as a different track. Like it was originally supposed to be this like uh, abandoned spaceship, which was supposed to have like this horror theme of like candelabras and paintings and stuff like uh, floating in the background and stuff like that. And I remember talking with Matthias that like think about like silly Dracula, like funky Dracula, like stuff like that. Like how how did they portray like that aspect of horror in old games and stuff like that? And like how to how to make a music to that. And I think the bass line came from, because uh, we were working on a mobile version of SDW and only our other sound guy, he like, he made a track for the like variant of that level in the, um, in that game. And then Matthias was inspired by that to pick up the bass line. And then we went from there. But there was a lot of stuff like that where we were like, how could be, how, what could be, re what could Matthias reference from, from the, uh, here or there? And he came up with references by himself and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, then just went went to town with it basically. Uh, similarly, with like uh, Robot Factory, I remember we're talking about like Terminator stuff like that. Like, and then there's a lot of Mega Man references. Like, it was just I'm not the best person to talk about it because I didn't make it. But from my point of view, it was all about coming up with um, references, coming up with like themes and and and, and like sort of emotions, uh, brands of fun, so to speak, and and often we try to find like certain tracks, like hey this could fit and this would fit, and I'm quite sure uh, Matthias also came up with a lot of these by himself that he ended up using. So yeah, and, and I, from the very very early stages we had like, we wanted to have like, a, we're talking about like a studio length soundtrack, like a proper soundtrack, not just like short loops or whatever, like every single song should be a actual song with actual structure and like like stuff like actual actual parts, uh, like something you could listen to, not be, just because it was in a game, but also because it's a good song. Like, I guess that's that might be a different approach to a lot of games because often it's like, oh, we're making a retro, retro, whatever, pixel game, and then we're gonna have a chip tune soundtrack. But it's gonna be like, uh, like the songs are only gonna have one part that it loops through or whatever, and or you know, it's gonna be much more dynamic, uh, which I guess also can be really cool. But here we were just like, no, we, every every stage just needs to have a song that could be on an album. Um, that's pretty much. Uh, how it went down from my point of view, and it is a really good soundtrack, I still listen to it, even though I had to listen to it a lot when I was making the game, but... 